Hello everyone, this is Curtis Eckerman, and I'm going to show you how to sign up for iNaturalist. In future videos, I will discuss the functionality of iNaturalist, how to do various things in iNaturalist, but in this video we're simply going to cover the settings and uh, how to properly set up your iNaturalist account. So the very first thing you need to do is go to iNaturalist on the web. Now I will also be covering how to use the Seek app as well as the iNaturalist app on your smart devices. But first, you need to make an account. Now you can make an account directly through those apps I just mentioned. However, the uh, settings will be easier to set here if you go to the web first. So I highly recommend you make your account on the web first and then you set up your apps um, later. So first go to iNaturalist.org and you will come to this page to sign up. Now uh, just simply click sign up here or up here on the right and sign up and it will take you to the sign up page. I'm going to just go to the sign up page instead of just clicking on it because it tries to autofill my information um, on my desktop and I want to have a clean um, sign up page. So here's the sign up page you're going to come up with and uh, even though you see this material here note that as you scroll down you can also uh, create an account by using your Facebook or your uh, Google uh, sign in through Google as well so you can do it a little bit differently but you can also just simply add information here I'm going to do that I'm going to use um, a uh, name that's not mine I'm going to use my great grandmother's name she died over 50 years ago so I don't think she'll mind uh, Talitha I'm just going to use Talitha and uh, this is her email actually I'm just going to do it like it is Talitha Moeller at gmail.com and I'm going to give her uh, a username Talitha M it'll tell me if it's not a good um, username later and I'm going to use a password oops I didn't do it correctly there and click on the fact that I'm not a robot and down here are some options for you to look at. You're going to have to collect, or you're going to have to click at least on the bottom one that you agree to the, the terms and service of privacy policy. I highly recommend that you look at those. Um, the first one here to license your photos, sounds, and observations so scientists can use your data. Um, for if you're in my class, you need to have this checked. Um, obviously, this is to make the observations that you are going to make available for others to see. Um, and you're also going to consent to allow unnaturals to store and process limited kinds of personal information. And this is not um, going to collect your information to sell it to anybody. They don't do that. You can learn more about this here. Uh, they collect your information in terms of locality and, and you as the observer. This is a nonprofit um, uh, a citizen science project as you can see it's run by the California Academy of Sciences and the National Geographic you can donate but there is no there are no ads there is nothing to uh, buy here unless of course you want to go buy a nice t-shirt from uh, from my naturalist store but other than that you're not going to be prompted to pay for anything you're not going to have any ads associated with that as well um, I'm gonna go back up here and can reconfirm that I'm not a robot and I'm gonna head and click and we are in and so you can see that um, I've, I've come to an exploration page here this was basically the image that was on the front here uh, th we're not really concerned about that but you now have an account and uh, I can see I don't have anything here the first thing you want to do is click on this icon that is you and we're going to click on it and it's going to take you to your page um, you as an observer and um, you can, would you prefer view common names using the United States? We're going to hit, hit yes. There's a number of other things that we can do here. So you can see that your username's here. And here's your home, here's profile, and so forth. The first thing we want to do is we want to update our profile. And with profile, 
you do not you're not required to add anything here you could leave it blank it's uh, always nice though to post a little about yourself maybe you're in a class maybe you're interested in a group of organisms maybe you're interested in, in nematodes like it says, it says down here and um, this is going to be the place that's going to track all of your information it's going to contract your observations and uh, things like that so we go here to profiles and uh, this is where you can change information about yourself. You can also um, go over to, let's say, edit your account settings and profile. We're going to click on that. And this is an important place for you to uh, um, update or to change um, for personal purposes as well as to uh, for the class, if you're in my class. For instance, it would be really helpful to me as the instructor looking at a, uh, observations of my students if you put your name here. Now, um, this name will not pop up on all the observations. It's going to have your username instead. But if somebody were to click on your profile, they would see, of course, who you are. Uh, you can also change this icon to a picture of yourself, or maybe it's a picture of your favorite pet or something along those lines. That's fine. And then change the time zone and you can also change uh, languages here as well and you can also set a default place for observation searches now that this is getting into a little bit more um, that we'll cover a little bit later but let's say you set the location as your home that will be the default for searching for organisms in your particular area you can also come in here and connect your accounts to facebook twitter Flickr, and so on that's a little bit more advanced. Certainly, if you're going to use iNaturals a lot, you might consider um, connecting them to those particular accounts. Um, there are options down here to tell, your, tell people about yourself. You also have the ability to block certain users or mute certain users. Um, I've never had an opportunity to do that. The community has been very, very good, and I've not, never run into somebody that was just uh, belligerent here in iNaturalist. Um, you can receive notifications to your email. The one I signed up with will get information. Um, I usually get you usually get a daily uh, reminder about updates or uh, maybe you're following somebody and um, they've uh, added some observations and it'll give you those kind that kind of information. You can certainly check off all of this and not have it show you uh, anything. So you can have it don't send you an email. Um, it's not required that you have uh, somebody send you an email uh, for my course or for anything else for that matter. Uh, in general, leave most of this at the default setting. And uh, what we really want to do is come down here. Again, uh, licensing. Licensing has to do with um, the ability for other people to use the images that you add into iNaturalist and the information here. And in general, leave it at the default. Um, you can you can change it in if you want to. Let's say that you're a professional photographer and you want to get paid for your photos, or you don't want people just utilizing them. You might have stricter stricter uh, licensing issues here, and so you may click on these other um, issues. You may have even no license. In other words, you you reserve all rights and do not give permission to use that photo. But in general, leaving um, the options here the default observation license and the default default photo license as it is will allow people to utilize your images um, as long as they give you credit for uh, being the one who, who took that uh, image and again again the same thing with sound uh, in general um, I don't have students generally use sound uh, observations but I've had a few and certainly is an option for you to record sounds and add so that's pretty much all you need to do for the, your uh, uh, profiles. You don't really need to change much, but you can certainly add information um, to your profile. So let's go back to profile. So that's all there is to um, making an account. When you use Seek and um, uh, the iNaturalist app, you're going to use the same. You're going to log in with this information. I'm going to use this username, and I'm going to use the password that I associated with this username as well to log in to seek and to log in to the iNaturalist app. So I will cover that in a separate video um, and show you how to use um, those particular uh, uh, applications and uh, utilize them. Now I should point out that at the very least you need an account in iNaturalist like this. 
you are not required to use Seek or the iNaturalist app. They are very handy apps and they will tie to this um, a website application and that you will be able to add photos and descriptions and all sorts of things from your smart device app. However, um, some people don't use those at all. I'll be honest with you, I don't use them because I have a different uh, methodology that I use. That is, I take a lot of photos in a, on a particular field trip. It's not uncommon for me to take 150 photos um, in, in an afternoon. And so I download all of those onto my desktop. I sort through my photos. And then I will simply add them directly to the website. So I don't use, even though I may use my phone to take the images, I won't use the apps on the phone um, to add them. But some people find those apps very convenient. And you're going to find out that one of them in particular, Seek, is going to be very useful for you initially as you're learning how to identify organisms. Okay, so that's all there is in terms of signing up and getting a, um, a iNaturalist account. And then again, in future videos, I'm going to talk about how to add an observation, um, how to uh, uh, interact with the community and interact with your observation and, and do things like edit and manage your observations.